Don't make it bigger than what it is. It's a football game. You've been playing football most of y'all all your life. Biggest game of your life next week. So when we run it, when we practice it, we all locked in. We all locked in. Nothing else matters but next week. Hey, great job tonight. When we needed it, we got it done. We made it closer than it should have been, but great job. Hey, I, hey, I ain't celebrating tonight. I'm locked in. I'm ready for next week. You get a chance to call yourself a champion next week. Stop, stop. Next week, a champion. East side. Nah, you must have the wrong team. The East Side Rams. Nah, because the East Side I know has been terrible for the last three seasons. How could they possibly be in this position? I'm glad you asked. Let's go back to the beginning. Over the last three seasons, East Side has gone a combined 5 and 25, including Anthony Richardson's senior year. These days, he's off to bigger and better things. I mean, he's. NFL bound. He's going to the league. But his high school has been down in the dumps. So they made some changes and brought back some homegrown talent. Introducing Harold Hoskins, like, aka like. Gator. He look like what? Oh Smash demons. Make him sell it. Let's go. My father actually gave me the nickname when I was growing up. Um, well, actually, when I was born, uh, from where he's from, it means go getter. So he thought I was going to be a go getter, so he named me Gator. Gator played quarterback and safety in his time at East Side. He turned that into a very successful career at Marshall University, where he played tight end. He went from throwing passes to catching passes while taking classes in Huntington, West Virginia, totaling over 1,300 yards receiving and 28 touchdowns. After going on drafted in the NFL draft, he signed briefly with the Miami Dolphins in 2014, and now he's come home. Honestly, man, I got tired of Eastside looking bad. You know, I knew that I felt like I could help. I knew some guys that would come along with me to help, and I just got tired of it looking like this. Hoskins would build his staff with some of his best friends, former teammates, and Eastside alone. He called me and he said, man, I got the job and I want you to be the defensive coordinator. And honestly, I was a little hesitant because I'd never been a defensive coordinator before. But uh, he had faith in me. He reassured me that he think I can do it, and it, it's a blessing. He gave me a sense of betting on yourself. It, it was kind of nerve-wracking that, that month and a half leading up to him actually getting the job, but uh, it was just a, a feeling of being overjoyed once we did, knowing that uh, you know we got a big responsibility on our hands and a chance to kind of bring the community back together and uh, the chance to kind of put Eastside back on top. That journey will start on the road against Cross City opponent P.K. Young. Let's just say PK didn't have a chance. I mean, damn, that's tough. Eastside would go on to win 48 to 21, and the following week, they kept it rolling with a 26 to 0 win over Keystone Heights. Next up was city rival Buholtz. That was a tall task. Buholtz was coming off a run to the state final four. They dominated the Rams, winning the last nine matchups. This was a statement game, but it got canceled due to rain. So we turn to week four, Bradford, the homecoming game. This one would be different. Joaquin, hey, you got a chance to do something special. I can't remember the last. I, have you ever been 3-0? No. Have you ever been 3-0? Eastside ain't never been 3-0. Hey, we got a chance to do that tonight, all right? Let's make it better than it's ever been. Hey, if I told you it was the last time you were going to wear that Eastside jersey, all right, how hard would you play? You play real hard, right? Yes, sir. Hey, imagine it's the last time ever wearing that jersey. That's how I need you playing tonight. Hey, they physical. They ready to play, fellas. So you better hey, have your hard hat on. First play of the game, it's time to play. None of that soft stuff. Let's go play ball, fellas, all right? Yes, sir. Locked in, chance to go 3-0. I told you, every day, 55, all right? Yes, every day, every play. Let's go out there locked in, ready to play, fellas. Let's go touch somebody.
Yeah, so east side wouldn't go 3-0. Something was off in this one. This couldn't possibly be the same team that dropped a combined 74 points in their first two games. It's like they were missing something. What if I told you that the team's first loss actually came off the field? Remember that blindside block when the left tackle pulled? Well, the team was blindsided and shocked when that same left tackle was pulled for good. On September 4th, senior left tackle Davian Dede White died. He was 17. I remember like almost like a shiver going down my spine. And I was like, what? Like, that it, it gotta be a joke. You know, Dede's a jokester. It gotta be, something's not right. And then, yeah, then it just like started getting more and more real as time went on. I mean, he was a great kid. Funny, uh, loving, caring, great to be around. I was excited to be his coach, man. You know, just from seeing the hard work that he put in over the summertime. And I told him, hey, if you want to be great, you got to work hard at it. And, you know, for him to finally turn the corner, that was that was the toughest thing about it. Because I finally seen him turning the corner, believing in himself, putting in that hard work. And for it to come up short, you know, it was it was heartbreaking. He was a good kid. He had a good attitude. You know, he always joke and laugh with you. You know, everybody kind of, uh, all the players kind of flocked to him. You know, they wanted to be around him. He was very popular. Man, Day Day, man, that was like, that was like one of my other kids, man. Like, I used to take him home every day. I would pick him up for practice. You know what I'm saying? If he needed me, I'm there for him. If I go pick up something from Zaxxon, he's there, you know what I'm saying? I pretty much knew Day Day all his life. Like, me and his daddy played ball out here together. Me and his mama went to the boys and girls club together. It's like. I knew Big Dog all his life. He was, man, big, gentle giant. The PK game was one of the ones that really popped in my head. He was coming up to me, coach, make me a captain. Come on, coach, make me a captain. And I was like, man, I'm going to think about it. But I already had told the reps that he was a captain, so I'm over there just messing with him. You know, I, I think about it, man. I see how you do during warm-ups. Come on, coach, please make me a captain. And when I announced that he was a captain, to see the smile on his face and how happy it was, you know, that brought joy to me that, hey, he was able to say I was a captain before I went out. I mean, it would have to be that PK game, you know, him just wanting to take care of people, always wanting to laugh and have fun and crack jokes. But, uh, you know, on that play, we ran a counter play against PK Young. He was able to, to kind of show that other side of him, the, the side that, you know, a lot of college coaches would have loved, man. Man, we were laying in his locker room and I was, I was talking trash to him. And just out of nowhere, he just grabbed me and politely put me on the thing and just laid me on the ground and said, Cole, what you going to do? I just had to get up. <laughs> Couldn't do nothing. Couldn't do nothing. Couldn't do nothing. Eastside couldn't do nothing against Bradford. You had a chance to fight tonight. Some of y'all laid. It's all right. Hey, because we're going to get better next week. It's a life lesson. Hey, now how do we face adversity? All right, we must stay together as a family. The team is battling a whirlwind of emotions off the field. The day after suffering their first loss on the gridiron, the team gathered in the Eastside Auditorium for the homegoing service of their fallen teammate. That is where they announced that they were dedicating the rest of the season to 55. Surely we will be this. Um, no way we can replace him. All right, but we'll do it every day the way that we'll honor him, every day the way that we live. I talk to the boy about every day, every play. All right, we will dedicate the rest of the season to day. So what now? Hopefully we can go ahead and finish this season on top, man, and uh, do this in his memory, man, because he, he definitely deserves it. The first game of district play is always important. But in this case, it's kind of like the first playoff game. Let me break it down. Eastside is in a district with two other schools, North Marion and Santa Fe. Beat both district opponents and you're in the playoffs. North Marion already beat Santa Fe. Pretty handily, I might add. So Eastside needed this one if they were going to have a chance to dance. All right, go out there and fight tonight. Give it all you got, did something. Hey, we don't come too far, fellas. This is the start of the turnaround right here. Hey, I'm so sorry for the season that y'all don't get a chance to see. Hey, it's coming, though. It's time for you to put it on your shoulders now. Put it on your shoulders, seniors. We riding off you, Rio. What you going to do? Let's go then. Hey, we ain't got nothing else to talk about. Let's pray it up. We ain't got nothing else to talk about.
the job not done. The job ain't done. We ain't no district champions yet. Oh, all right. Hey, we just took care of business. We still in it. We got, hey, we got another day to live. We got another day to live. That's it. That's all we did. Took care of business. All right. Hey, we got one more. One more. We got to take care of Santa Fe. Hey, boys, take one game at a time. One game at a time. Friday, we got Ridgeview. We got to take care of Ridgeview. One game at a time, fellas. While Eastside was able to beat North Marion, the offense stalled for a second straight week. The message in practice was that the offense, and more specifically, the offensive line, needed to be better. We hadn't done anything on offense in two weeks. Three weeks. Zero points in nine quarters. Man, zero points. We got to pick it up. Yeah, guys, we won that game. We ain't do nothing. Be real with yourself. The heavens were above God. He blessed us. He blessed us. We ain't do nothing right there. I need y'all boys to understand this, man. He's still with us. He's still with us. Spiritually. Wait, 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 wait. He still got us spiritually. That North Marion game probably wouldn't have happened without him. I'm going to just be completely honest. You know what I'm saying? But I know for a fact right now, my boy's down there tripping. Just being there to support him at his funeral just wasn't enough for me, bro. I feel like we still owe him a lot. That 55 on y'all back y'all helmet, dog. We owe him. We miss him, bro. This is our unit, bro. We always said from the beginning, we all we got, we all we need. Let's keep it like that, man. They saw a little something against Ridgeview. Put 35 points on the board. And now, they're four and one. I think people are starting to take notice. But everyone wasn't fond of Eastside's recent success. Just ask Newberry. They had next. If Eastside were to shut down the season right now, they've already exceeded expectations. Hoskins has the Rams taking what looks like a step forward. Or as assistant coach Andre Bradford would say. Hey, listen, bro. Hey, you don't want four games. That ain't, that's something Eastside ain't done in five, six years. Hey, man, he, he's great. He's great. Yeah, the Rams comfortable. The kids on this team have never been in this position before. On a winning team? That's crazy. So Eastside's riding high going into Newberry. It's finna be a party. Oh, did I mention it was Newberry's homecoming game? You're not supposed to lose the homecoming game. Eastside lost theirs. So now, it's time to crash the party. It's time to dominate. Let's take over the city one team at a time. And it just happened to be the next. Y'all say y'all want to do this 55, right? Yeah. Do it! Let's go out here and finish this game. We're not losing. If you put it on 55, do it for him. Hey, give me something for this on three. One, two, three. Yeah. is the word. This isn't how this one was supposed to go. Losing to Newberry two years in a row, that's the same old east side and they got a long bus ride home. Don't worry about the loss. As the season ages, the Rams dropped a four and two, but... Nothing changes. You still got a chance to be different champs. Understand the goal at hand. Different champs make the playoffs. Hey, but we cannot come around playing with teams. You gotta lock in. Boy, was they locked in a tight one the following week against Bellevue. On the road again, Rattler's homecoming. 
Like, it's the same storyline. And the outcome was, well, it came down to the wire. Bigger than what it is. It's a football game. You've been playing football most of y'all all your life. Biggest game of your life next week. So when we run it, when we practice it, we all locked in. Hey, great job tonight. When we needed it, we got it done. We made it closer than it should have been, but great job. Hey, I ain't celebrating tonight. I'm locked in. I'm ready for next week. You get a chance to call yourself a champion next week. Let's lock in, hey, let's be focused, and let's give it all we got. Yes, sir. The time has come. The district championship. Let's take a look at those standings real quick. Eastside, number one. North Marion, number two. And Santa Fe, number three. Even though Santa Fe is having a down year, a win over Eastside would cause a three-way tie in the district. Then what? Well, North Marion would get the nod because... They have more impressive wins. So it's simple. Win, and you're in. Oh, and did I mention it was senior night? This could truly be the last chance to dance. Everything we've been through. Hey, don't be surprised. I told you over the summer. Nobody worked hard as us this summer. And now we just reaping the benefits, fellas. We just reaping the benefits. Hey, we champions forever. 55 is a champion forever. Hey, they said this wouldn't be done. We did it. So guess what, fellas? Hey, we're going to celebrate tonight. I'm happy as hell. I'm happy for you guys, man. Hey, especially for the boys that have been here three years, all right? And the whole community gave up on you. Hold it. You done been playing your ass, man. This one's for you, man. This one's for you, man. Hey, but it's only one check. We ain't done. It's only one check. Hey, only thing this means is we in the dance. And now we got to go dance. The Rams had one more thing they wanted to do before the end of the regular season. Hey, we got another check to check off. GHS has been disrespecting us. Amen. Hey, for the last 13 years, we owe them. Jeez, 13 straight losses to the Purple Hurricanes. And a loss this season would make matters worse considering that GHS was 0-9. They'd love nothing more than to end the season off with a splash. But Hoskins has been waiting on this one. 
The last time Eastside beat GHS was in 2008, and he was the quarterback. Trust me, I knew it coming in. I, I had told Coach Boyd, I'm going to be able to say I was the last quarterback to do it, and I was the first head coach to do it. So that was one of those things that I wanted to check off my list. Well, the Rams were ready for this one and kept the Hurricanes from making it rain. I mean, 10 weeks and not even a sprinkle? Back to the drawing board. And Eastside, they got at least another week. It's time to dance. Let the record show that none of the players on this team have ever been to the playoffs. But the more things change, the more things stay the same as an opponent's. The Rams would have to play someone they've already played again. But who could it be? The luck of the draw says... Oh, not the district opponent. The North Marion Colts? Dang. And they got the higher seed? I said it was like the first playoff game because it's the first playoff game. But this time, the Colts had to come to the east side. And the results were all that. We get one shot, fellas. One shot. We belong here. It's no mistake that we here. We belong here. We got to come out there and show it. If it don't got a white jersey on, let's put it in the dirt. Most important, let's have some fun tonight, man. ADV ANCE advance into the second round where it was the same thing. Somebody they seen before, a team that brings out all the emotions, and they had to go to their place. Let's take that journey to Stark, Bradford. It was worse than before, not just because the Tornadoes put up more points this time, but because this loss put the final nail in the coffin. The season was over. M-A-R-K, Mark, defined as making a visible impression or staying on. Head coach Gator Hoskins didn't leave his mark because he won football games or because he came back to his alma mater. 
He left his mark by giving his players, coaching staff, and community something to believe in. He provided hope to a group that had been counted out, overlooked, and slept on. And while his team was distraught after a tough loss, he encouraged them to pick their heads up and keep moving forward. You believe in yourself. Hey, who would imagine we would have been here? Amen. I'm proud of you guys. Let's leave it better than when you got it. And now you guys have laid the foundation down. You laid it down. This is, hey, this is the bar. For every guy coming back, this is the bar. Nothing less than the playoffs. That's what everybody expected from us now. These seniors did what they had to do. They came in, they fought. Hey, they led. They did everything they could. I'm, hey, I, once again, I'm proud of you guys, man. It was an honor to coach you guys, man, an honor. But hey, it don't stop here. Take what you learned from this season, use it in life. Don't think now, because football over with, I ain't got to do nothing. I can go out there and make bad decisions now. Take what you learned this season, use it in life. Two and eight to eight and three. Hey, you, you guys, you, you seem to able to go out district champs, Coast City champs. First time Eastside don't want to play our game since I think 2007. First time Eastside done beat GHS since 2008, 2009. Hey, you able to go out and say, we did, we did what we could. Because who would imagine? Y'all been through hell this year. It ain't a lot of people can say they went through what y'all been through. Then you picked your head up. So ain't no need to look down. Hey, we on the rise, man. It hurt. But remember how it hurt. I love all you guys. Hey, no matter what, we always gonna be a family, baby. We east side. We around. Everybody in here. So no matter, hey, five years from now, you need me, I, I'm always going to be there for you. I'm always going to be there for you. All right, we always going to be family. All right, hey, we're going to pray it up. We, hey, we're gonna bring, it one more, bring it down one more time today, all right? All right, let's go, man. Make sure everybody say in the prayer. Touch somebody. Let's go, Jaden. Our Father. Our Father. Which I have to do. Our name. Our name. Our kingdom come. Our kingdom come. We'll be done. We'll be done. On earth. On earth. As in heaven. As in heaven. Hey, we're going to put it down for heaven one more time, baby. Let's go. Wait up, wait up. Hey. It's about to be. It's about to be. One, two, three. Let's go. Who would have thought? Not me. I pulled up when they were 2-0. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. But you, you probably missed it because you've slept on the east side. But I bet you won't sleep next year. <laughs>